Chapter 38 Monsters vs. Adventurers Leader of Wargood's Greatsword POV Shit! This is too early! A group of monsters could be seen far ahead. I had to let out a swear as I stared at it coming towards us at an unusual speed. I hadn't measured exactly how much time had passed since we left the Labyrinth City. However, considering the distance, it should have been only about two hours. Because of this, there was no way I could imagine that monsters would show up. Isn't the monsters just appeared a short while ago? A lich was trying to shoot tactical class magic toward the Labyrinth City, the words Rost said to us were still fresh in my memory. About the tactical class magic, I thought he was just exaggerating, but I didn't think it was a lie when he said a lich appeared. Our reasoning for running away from the Labyrinth City at this timing also with consideration to the information Rost said. If the monsters just appeared a short while ago, then we should still have some time until the next wave appeared. If we're lucky, we might be inside the neighboring town before the monsters show up. Because that was what I was hoping for, I couldn't hide my turmoil at the earlier-than-expected appearance of the monsters. The same was true for others, the adventurers who were preparing in a hurry had a look of impatience on their face and their work was clearly slow. The sight made me realize. Running away now would only make the situation worse. Why can't anything go right? I clenched my teeth in irritation. The adventurers were just a decoy to me. Still, I wanted to avoid losing them meaninglessly. I assumed that we would be using the adventurers as bait much later. I couldn't afford to lose the decoy in a place like this. Besides, there was something I couldn't afford to lose more than the adventurers. M. Monsters! You will protect us, right? If I know this will happen, I should just stay in the Labyrinth City. The guild employees, completely useless in a sudden emergency, were in an uproar. They were irritating to look at, but they were absolutely necessary to escape the city. I made a decision that would create a situation where I could escape with the guild employees. Everyone, ready your weapons. We will fight while protecting the one that's not ready for battle yet. Some of the adventurers who had finished preparing grimaced from the order. However, the adventurers eventually readied up their weapons without saying anything. Their attitude annoyed me, but this is not the time, I thought as I looked in the direction the monsters coming from. It wasn't long before the monsters became apparent. Hobgoblins, who were well over a hundred, running this way while raising their war cry. Isn't that too much? At the sight, my face naturally tensed. We got five hundred adventurers, there was no way we would lose this. Still, in this situation, where we never know when monsters would appear from the labyrinth, the time wasted could become fatal. And how much time would it take to deal with this number of monsters in a relaxed manner? Worst case, should I leave the adventurers and book it with only my party and the guild employees? That idea came to my mind, but the approaching monsters interrupted my thought. The first one to jump at me was the hobgoblin at the head of the group of monsters. Die! The hobgoblin leaped at me empty-handed with an inhuman voice oozed with murderous intent. I swung down my greatsword at that hobgoblin like I was taking out my anger on them. Getting in my way! Every last of them! Instead of crushing the hobgoblin's head, the sword cleaved its entire body vertically. GG! The moment I swung down my greatsword, maybe thinking it was their chance, another hobgoblin jumped at me. However, the attack didn't hurt my body either. The armor I wore easily blocked the hobgoblin's attack, who was empty-handed. Gee dash! It doesn't work! I kicked the hobgoblin's abdomen, which was surprised by the hardness of my armor, with foot protected in hard shoes, and barked at it. Then, I cut through the hobgoblin, which had stopped moving, with my greatsword. In response to that, more hobgoblins gathered around me, but the unarmed hobgoblins were no match for me. A single swing of my greatsword cut through the bodies of multiple hobgoblins, while their attacks were repelled by my armor. 
the hobgoblins gradually disappeared from my sight, and before I knew it, I even had time to check the status of the battle. The adventurers who fought against the hobgoblins weren't unharmed. Just from the little I could confirm, there were even some casualties. Even among the intermediate and above adventurers. However, the battle situation was not bad at all. That's what you get when you have 500 people. Having confirmed that, I laughed. At the very least, I judged this would allow us to protect the guild employees and the damage to the adventurers was within expectation. Hum! But the next moment, my smile froze when I spotted the orcs that appeared from behind the hobgoblins. Inhabitant of the middle layer of the labyrinth, orc. As someone who's hunting ground on the lower layer, they weren't something I need to pay much attention to. That's an orc? Are you shitting me? That common sense was destroyed the moment I saw those orcs. They were much less numerous compared to the hobgoblins. There must be no more than fifty people. Despite this, I instinctively understood. This group of orcs was much more troublesome compared to the hobgoblins. At that moment, I reflexively yelled at Lewis, the leader of Spirit of Wind and Fire, the same first-class adventurer like me. Lewis, prioritize killing them first. When I shouted, Lewis already started chanting to cast magic. Noticing that, I realized Lewis also reached the same judgment as me. Yes, anyone other than us wouldn't be a match against those orcs. Our judgment was correct. I could hear screams from the group of adventurers who had begun engaging the orcs before us. The fuck is this orc? Knowles! Open your eyes! The battle situation that should have been favorable a moment ago changed in an instant. Unless somebody stopped the flow, the guild employees could be harmed. Fuck! Understanding this clearly, I started running toward the orcs in order to change the situation even just a little. The magic of Lewis and Alex from my party, who was chanting from behind him, was completed just when I reached the orcs. Wind Spirit! Tree Spirit! The wind ripped through the bodies of several orcs, and the trees further restricted their movement. However, the orcs were undaunted by such a degree of magic. The orcs who were not restricted by the trees ignored us and made their way to the other adventurers. As for the orcs that movement was restricted, they began to peel off the tree that restricted their movement without breaking their composure. That's not how orcs should be. In a blink of an eye, more than half of the tree restraint had been stripped off, the sight made Alex scream. Alex's attack, which would normally be able to stop an orc for a few minutes, was not working on these orcs. Even so, even these orcs were still full of openings when they were peeling off the trees. Or a a e a. I was already right in front of the orcs, there was no way I was going to miss the opportunity. Using my greatsword, I cut off the arm of the orc who was peeling off the trees. Bugii. The orc let out a filthy scream as its arm was cut off. It glared at me with eyes full of fury. The next moment, the orc stopped peeling off the trees and tried to grab me with its remaining arm. However, a one-armed attack with restrained movement would never hit me. I cut off the arm it stretched toward me with my greatsword and laughed. Too slow! Fuji thigh. The raging orcs were frothing bubbles from its mouth, the bloodlust I could feel from such an orc was comparable to the lower layer's ogre. However, an orc who had lost both arms and had its movement restrained was not a match for me. Die! I slammed my greatsword at the orc's neck. For a moment, the momentum of my greatsword weakened from hitting the bone, but with my enhanced physical strength, I forced it through. I smiled triumphantly at the motionless, headless corpse of the orc. You're unlike the other. So troublesome. That was when the other orcs broke through their restraint. Possibly seeing me as a threat after killing one of its friends, multiple orcs attacked me all at once. Dash. The attack was much faster than I had imagined. My eyes widened from the attack that was not inferior or even better to the one from lower layers ogre. 
Still, as someone who was dealing with lower layer ogre, it was within what I could handle. Don't underestimate a warrior. I used my greatsword to deal with attacks that could be fatal to my body, and my armor to deal with the rest, as I faced multiple orcs. However, I was hitting my limit. The orcs were attacking one after another while I was forced to only defense. The orc distorted its ugly face to mock me. Just all bark. As if they were convinced of their victory. Then, the orc's attack became more intense. But even under that circumstance, there was no impatience in my heart. I calmly dealt with the orc's attack. Indeed, a warrior's role was an attacker that deal damage to monsters. However, that wasn't the only role warrior had. For a fellow magician to cast magic. To prevent the attack from going to the ranger. The most important role of a warrior was to take the monster's attack and gain time. Therefore, I laughed at the orcs. Shut up. You are the ones who will lose. The orcs grimaced and were about to say something to me who had no leeway. However, before the words could be spat out of its mouth, the orc collapsed to its knees. It was not only that one orc. Several of the orcs that had been concentrating on attacking me suddenly fell to the ground in front of me. Full of opening. Appearing from behind the collapsed orcs were Marsval, the martial artist of Wargood's greatsword. I couldn't help but smile at the sight of him. Martial artists couldn't inherently strengthen their bodies. Nevertheless, this firepower was the reason why the adventurers favored them. No matter how good you were as a warrior, there was no way for them to defeat these orcs with a single blow. However, with martial artists' skill, they could put you out of combat with a single blow. That firepower sometimes could change the course of the battle. Yes, like now. Bugi. The sudden collapse of their ilk and Marsval appearing from behind them. The next moment, the orcs judged Marsval was a threat and turned around to face him. But that was a bad move that should never be made in any conceivable way. After all, they just exposed their back to me. Raising my physical strength to the limit, I shouted and swung my greatsword at the necks of the orcs. Die! The sideways swing I made with all my strength cleaved through the neck of one orc and stopped in the middle of the second one. After receiving an attack that should be fatal to a human, the second orc didn't collapse. On the contrary, that orc glared at me with angry eyes and raised its arm. Tisk! Before it swung down its arm, I let go of my greatsword and retreated far back. I have a spare dagger, but that won't deal that much damage to the orcs. What to do? Hesitation dominated my head. It was then I heard Alex chanting from behind me. Burn everything. Conflagration. The next moment, torrential flame passed right over me and clung to the orcs. When I saw that, I inadvertently smiled. The magic Alex cast was the strongest magic that had been effective in the past when the party had worked together to defeat a super high difficulty monster. No matter how much it mutated, even orcs with extraordinary power must be helpless. As I expected, the flame burned the orcs. Buggy thigh. Bugi eye. Bugi eye. The charred orcs used up all their strength and died from Alex's magic. I made sure none of the orcs that we hadn't dealt with moved. After that, I picked my greatsword with its slightly burnt handle. This wasn't a quasi-magic sword, so I have to buy another one. For a moment, I was thinking about scolding Alex, but I pushed back that feeling as this was not the time. Then, I looked around. Currently, the battle situation was not good at all. Most of the adventurers below intermediate level couldn't handle the orcs at all, and many had died. Still, this was not the worst situation. If this keeps up, the orcs can be subdued safely. The fleeing adventurers were unable to put up a good fight and were being killed by the orcs. The damage was not small. 
However, thanks to the adventurers keeping the orcs occupied, we, the first-class adventurers, were able to repel the orcs steadily. Although the guild employees were scared, they were unharmed. If this is the case, we can escort the guild employees safely. I took a breath of relief while watching the parties like Lewis and his party, Spirit of Wind and Fire, steadily repelling the orcs. But I should have noticed at this time. In the current situation where so many monsters appeared, it was not strange at all for monsters stronger than orcs to appear. No, it was stranger if they didn't appear. I noticed that when it was too late. What? The ground shook incomparably harder up to now. In response to that, I looked in the direction where the monsters came, in other words, in the direction of the labyrinth. Running toward us from that direction was the monsters I should have known well. Oh, ogre! Chapter 39 Route Leader of Wargood's Greatsword, POV When I noticed the appearance of the ogre, what came to my mind was intense frustration. Considering how strong the orcs were, there was no way the ogre was only as strong as the one we usually fought. At the very least, the threat would be greater than a party of liches and ogres, the worst of the lower layer. For an opponent like that, the current wargood's greatsword down a warrior and a healer. If it weren't for her. Intense hatred toward the blue-haired martial artist that incapacitated wargood's greatsword's warrior and healer surged. But there was no point in doing that now. In any case, we now have to get through this situation somehow. The choice of using the adventurers as decoys and running away flickered in my mind. It was then, Lewis, the leader of Spirit of Wind and Fire, commanded. All members, kill the ogre first. Stall it! That command made me understand that Lewis also considered the ogre to be a big threat like I was. Looking in the direction of the voice, I could see Lewis chanting to make sure the ogre was dead while the vanguards were assaulting the ogre to buy him the time for chanting. If it's spirit of wind and fire. I was relieved at the sight. Spirit of wind and fire led by Lewis was a party based on Lewis's overwhelming magic. The party consisted of Lewis as the magician, three warriors, and a martial artist. Based on that alone, outside of there were more of them compared to other parties' vanguards, the vanguard didn't sound different from other parties, however, Lewis's party's vanguard wore heavy equipment for the sake of buying time. Unlike usual, they didn't have shields with them this time, but they wore strong full-body armor. While the warriors buying time, Lewis cast super-high firepower magic into the monsters, that was what I was told about how Spirit of Wind and Fire fought before. From the fighting style, Lewis's party wasn't good at fighting opponents like Lich's party, but they were strong in the situations where there was only an ogre like this time. That was why I had no doubt the ogre would be easily defeated by Lewis's party. I was convinced that if it was spirit of wind and fire, they wouldn't lose to the ogre. However, the reality didn't go the way I imagined it would. The spirit of wind and fire's warriors roared as they charged toward the ogre. Die! Oraea! Oraeora! To distract the ogre from Lewis and the martial artist, the warriors showered it with blows from the greatsword they had equipped. It was purely for distraction and couldn't be called an attack. None of the warriors would think about defeating the ogre with only that. The figure that stood to protect Lewis, who was single mindedly chanting, was the best proof of this. It was then my experience as a warrior told me an abnormality. After getting hit this much, it still bears no wound? Even if inflicting injury was not the main point of the attack, an attack made with a greatsword should carry decent force behind it. The greatsword the warriors with their reinforced body used was just that heavy. Despite this, the ogre didn't seem to be injured. If anything, it didn't even try to prevent them from attacking and just looking at them like they were a bother. And then, the ogre slowly raised its hand. Caw! Run away! At that moment, I felt unpleasant premonition and reflexively shouted. However, my warning was too late. Because the ogre had already swung down its arm on one of the warriors. Arg! 
The strong armor protecting the warrior dented and a deafening scream rose. The remaining warriors stood in a daze, not knowing what happened. H. Help! Help me! However, seeing their companion walking around in a dented armor that obstructed his movement, asking for help, the remaining warriors finally understood. Our armor is useless against the ogre's attack. And no way! Well, what should we do? What should we do? And the warriors quickly fell into panic. Those warriors, while they wore armor, as seen from the fact they were here, could move to some extent. Despite this, they just stood still and made no attempt to run away. It was a side effect of always wearing strong armor and feeling protected by it. When it became useless, they become frightened and helpless, as if they were standing naked in front of monsters. I had seen the sight once. Yes, it was when I went to subjugate super high difficulty monster. Are you saying the ogre's attack is on par to super high difficulty monster's attack? Once, I formed a temporary party with other first class adventurers and participated in the super high difficulty monster subjugation. The spirit of wind and fire's warriors also had shields, so it might not be the same, strictly speaking. Even so, the sight of their miserable panic as their armor was crushed by the monster was very similar to that time in the past. Because I could understand that, I couldn't hide the despair I felt from how hopeless the situation was. At the time of monster subjugation, in addition to Wargood's greatsword and spirit of wind and fire, two other first-class parties participated and were quick to provide follow-up. However, now that even I, who was the closest to the ogre, couldn't get closer right away, there was nothing that could save Spirit of Wind and Fire's warriors. So weak. Jaya Along with brief death throes, the warrior with dented armor was killed by the ogre, despair flashed across the faces of the other warriors. Even in such a situation, only Lewis didn't lose his composure. In order to bring his comrades back to their senses, Lewis desperately raised his voice. Don't panic. But his action led to an even worse situation. Get a grip. We can still fight. We have to fight. So you're the leader. Dying is huh? The next moment, the ogre targeted Lewis, ignoring the dumbfounded warriors and the martial artist who was rooted in place from fear. It lifted a scrap of iron, formerly the warrior it just killed, with its incredible strength and threw it at Lewis. Noticing that, Lewis tried to dodge, but being a rear guard, Lewis couldn't avoid such a high-speed object. Along with a dull sound, what used to be the warrior crashed into Lewis and he collapsed. I didn't know if he died. However, it was clear that he had been incapacitated. It was then that I realized the destruction of the spirit of wind and fire. What are we dealing with? I let out a trembling voice as I saw the ogre mowed down spirit of wind and fire who couldn't hide their turmoil now that their leader was incapacitated. I couldn't have imagined such a scene. At that time, what came to my mind was the words Rost said. It was about how a lich was trying to shoot tactical class magic. Shit! At this late hour, I regretted not believing him. However, I wasn't even given the time to be shocked or regretted. Suddenly, a high-pitched roar that threatened to burst my eardrums echoed across the grassland. Fi, I. Wa, dash. Shocked by that, I turned to the source of the roar and saw a white giant that was not inferior to the super high difficulty monsters, like the Hydra, I had seen before and a group of monsters led by it. Clad in purple lightning, it had a ferocious wolf-like face. With trembling voice, I say its name. Fun R.I.R. Lightning Speed Super High Difficulty Monster. It was then I realized we were in the worst situation, the appearance of a super high difficulty monster. Are you fucking kidding me? Why, why? The rapidly changing situation made me curse at no one. Fenrir was a super high difficulty monster with a speed that deserved the top spot among the super high difficulty monsters. It was the worst thing to encounter in the current situation. For a moment, I prepared for my own death. 
However, I suppressed that timid thought and glared at the ogre. I'm not going to die in the place like this. It's not certain we're going to die here yet, I encouraged myself. Be that as it may, there is only one way to survive this. Understanding that clearly, I shouted to my comrades. You guys, run with all your might. Gah. I threw my greatsword and held Alex, who was still dumbfounded, and started running toward the neighboring town. This wasn't a situation where I could worry about the guild employees anymore. Having decided the other adventurers would be the decoys, I ran without looking back. Burned in my mind was the regret for making light of Labyrinth Runaway and leaving the Labyrinth City. Chapter 40 Annihilation and Rout You a uh, Stop! Don't come! A despaired adventurer was killed by an orc the moment they finished saying that. It wasn't just that adventurer, the other adventurers whose abilities should have been incomparable to a guild employee like me were being killed by the monsters. In the midst of all this, all I could do was tremble as I desperately curled my body. After one of the parties leading the other adventurers was destroyed while another one fled, the battle situation was going downhill. Most adventurers ran away to chase after the fleeing first-class adventurers, and the front line collapsed easily. And what awaited us was a one-sided massacre by the monsters. In such a situation, no adventurer was trying to help a mere guild employee like me. Most adventurers were trying to escape without sparing a glance at me, but they couldn't escape and were killed by the monsters. Watch all dido watch all dido watch all dido. I was desperately trying to figure out how to survive the current situation. Try using other adventurers to stay alive, just like what I have been doing all this time, I thought. However, I realized that no matter how much I thought about it, it was useless. Why is this happening to me? Once I couldn't avert my eyes from that reality anymore, what came to my mind was the regret that I should not have fled the Labyrinth City. As a guild employee, I was taught that guild employees and adventurers should never run away from the labyrinth when a labyrinth runaway occurs. In the event of a labyrinth runaway, that guild's branch chief or an adventurer who had taken command before would be appointed as temporary commander, and the agreement was that everyone would absolutely obey that commander. Those who broke that agreement would be punished by the commander. However, the guild employees, including myself, were not willing to keep the arrangement. Because we realized that the world-class adventurers who would be appointed as a commander were trying to protect the populace. We couldn't accept the fact that our lives were endangered to carry such baggage under such circumstances. That was why we decided to flee from the Labyrinth City by deceiving the adventurers. Yes, by trying to run away to the next town. Fundamentally, running away to the neighboring town immediately after Labyrinth Runaway occurred was absolutely unacceptable. It depended on the situation, but the act, which could endanger the neighboring town, was punishable by the death penalty. However, we were thinking of making everything the fault of the adventurers who ran away after being driven by fear. In other words, we were thinking of escaping our punishment by saying we were kidnapped by them. It mattered not what the adventurers were saying after that, our words as guild employees should be more believable. The plan should have been perfect halfway through. Those foolish adventurers were quick to get on board with the plan after their inferiority complex toward Rost was fueled by telling them the world-class adventurers were going to help the populace. Moreover, when we told them that the Labyrinth City Guild's branch chief would be responsible for everything and that we would cover for him, they were easily fooled and agreed to run away with us. Oblivious to the fact that they would be framed for their crimes. Our only miscalculation was the naive understanding of Labyrinth Runaway. Why, such powerful monsters? I knew from the documents that monsters would mutate during Labyrinth Runaway. Knowing they would be powerful, I decided to act with escape as the objective. But even with that knowledge, if a labyrinth runaway occurs, absolutely obey the commander. I now understood the reason for this seemingly strict arrangement. The labyrinth runaway was just a disaster, one which became more dangerous if there were people who egoistically trying to save their own life. 
Without correct knowledge, that alone increased the risk of death. That was why absolute obedience was the rule. To prevent people who knew nothing from taking arbitrary action. Right, it's to stop people who don't know anything like us. Witnessing the horror of the labyrinth runaway, I was finally able to understand. This is not something that an individual can do anything about. It was a natural disaster that need the cooperation of everyone in the labyrinth city to have a chance to survive. I realized how foolish it was to have fled the labyrinth city in order to avoid being dragged down by more people. However, it was all too late. Ah, uh, eh, eh, In front of me, an adventurer who managed to cut off an orc suddenly looked in a different direction, screamed, then tried to run away from that spot. It was then that appeared and crushed that adventurer. Fie I. The white fur was so white and beautiful it felt out of place and it was covered with purple lightning. While capturing the unrealistic beauty with my eyes, I let out a small whisper. Super high difficulty monster, Fenrir. By the time I recognized that figure, I saw the end of myself. The fear and despair that swept over me made me feel distant. In the midst of all this, I saw a group of several battered adventurers behind the Fenrir trying to escape from the monsters to the Labyrinth City. Fie I. That was the last sight I, Nancy, saw in my life. Leader of Wargood's Greatsword, POV. Ha, ha. How long had I been running? Currently, I was running to the next town while carrying Alex. I kept running with belief that the neighboring town was almost visible, but the fatigue that came from running for a long time made my vision look blurry. Even so, the fear that the monsters would catch up if I stopped kept me from stopping. But I also knew that my body was nearing its limit. Lilieder, don't shake me so much. Ka. Alex's words made me feel an intense frustration in my heart. Escaping with Alex, who had no physical strength, was a big handicap for me. Despite this, let alone thank you, he was shameless enough to complain. Having been exhausted from running with all my might so far while carrying another person, the thought of leaving Alex here crossed my mind. However, I couldn't actually do that. Fuck! Now that the worst situation, a super high difficulty monster appeared, had happened, we needed to pit the monsters against the neighboring town in order to survive. For that purpose, Alex's magic was needed to destroy the walls that cover the neighboring town so the monsters could enter the city. Therefore, I couldn't take the option of leaving Alex here. Although I was really frustrated inside, I corrected my hold on him. Thank you. Hearing he sounded so tired even when he was only being carried made me even more frustrated. However, Alex wasn't the only source of my frustration. Even though I'm holding Alex, to brazenly running ahead. Far ahead was Marsval, a martial artist who strengthened his body with a magic tool. Marsval was running in front of me without worrying about me, even though I was holding Alex. He will probably also enter the town first once Alex makes a hole in the wall. Every last of them. Imagining that, I let out a frustrated groan. Either because of the fatigue or maybe from the fear of the super high difficulty monster behind me, but I was easily irritated. Looking behind, there were adventurers chasing after me. Even if the Fenrir arrived, those adventurers would be first to become a decoy. However, the time earned wouldn't amount to much. If I don't get to the neighboring town as soon as possible. It was then that I could see something that looked like a huge blue building in the distance. That is. Marsval who ran in front of me also getting faster. Seeing that, I was convinced. Just a little bit more and we will arrive, everything we have done so far is. A are we about to reach there yet? Because of the way I held him, Alex, who couldn't see the front asked that, I ignored him and just smiled. However, that smile turned into a question as Marsval suddenly stopped. Marsval? While questioning Marsval's sudden action, I quickened my pace toward the neighboring town. 
What dash? It was then I understood the reason Mars Val stopped. As I approached the neighboring town, I saw a blue phosphorescent barrier covering the town walls. I stopped in my tracks and stood there, stunned by the sight. As a non-magician, I didn't have much knowledge. Even so, I could understand that the barrier was created with a lot of effort. When the hell? Why such a barrier? In the face of this overwhelming barrier, I said that as I was overcome with surprise. It was the words Alex said right in my ear that brought me back to my sense. No way, the monsters are here already. Hum. In response to his words, I looked behind and saw the adventurers were fighting the orcs. Apparently, the monsters who chased after the escaped adventurers had already caught up. Fortunately, there were no ogres or the Fenrir. However, it was only a matter of time until they arrived. Judging that, I lowered Alex from my shoulder and ordered him. Alex, quick, crush this barrier with your strongest magic. Why yes. Then Alex started chanting. The look on my face as I watched him was one of great impatience. I had no doubt Alex's magic could break the barrier. After all, the same magic was capable of injuring a super high difficulty monster. With that magic, Alex would be useless for a while, but the magic must be able to break through the barrier with the entire rampart. However, I knew that the magic of that strength required a long chant. Hurry up, Alex, hurry up! Imagining a future in which Fenrir had appeared, I muttered quietly. The voice was filled with impatience that could not be hidden.